In the next few videos, we're going to go over an important aspect of cognition, which is problem solving. We're going to discuss the different types of problem solving, barriers to problem solving, approaches to problem solving, and heuristics and biases. In this video, we're going to start by defining what problem solving is and go over two different types of problem solving. So to start, problem solving is the active process of discovering what must be done in order to achieve a goal that is not readily attainable. There are several different types of problem solving. The first type we're going to discuss is inducing structure. In problems of inducing structure, the person must identify the relations or patterns between the items in the problem. There are many different types of problems of inducing structure. And here we have a couple examples. Here we have series completion. In series completion, you're presented with a number of items in a series, and they are in a specific order. And what you're typically asked to do is to find out what is the next item in the series. So let's take a look at this first one. We have all numbers. One, two, three, nine, four, five, six, six. All right. So the first thing you can do is try to take a look at these numbers and try to figure out what is the pattern here. And once you figure out the pattern, you can try to think, well, what would be the next item in the pattern? So if we look at these numbers, we have one, two, three, which is counting up, but then we have a nine, and then it continues four, five, six, and then we have a six. So you might be able to recognize there are two patterns here. You're counting up from one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and in between you have nine and six, which is decreasing by 30. So what would be next in the sequence will be continuing to count up. So you would have seven, eight, nine, and then since you have this nine and the six that are decreasing by three, then you would expect to have three next. So here you can see the pattern. You're counting up by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and in between you're decreasing by three starting from nine. Nine, six, three. Okay, let's take a look at our second example of series completion. Here we have letters and numbers. We have A, five, E, nine. Again, you can try to take a look at this and try to figure out what the pattern is and then what's going to be the next item in the series. So if we are looking at the letters, we go from A to E and then for the numbers, we go from five to nine. Well, from A to E is four letters, right? B, C, D, E. And for numbers, that's also four numbers, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can imagine you're just increasing by four each time. So after E, you have F, G, H, I. So you would have I, and then after nine, you have 10, 11, 12, 13. So these would be the next two items in the series. Okay, another example of inducing structure is analogy problems. In analogy problems, you're going to be given an example of a relationship, and then you're going to have to apply that to a new situation or topic. So for our first one, we're told grocery market is to fruits and vegetables, and pharmacy is to what? So first thing we need to figure out is what is the relationship between grocery market and fruits and vegetables? And as you can imagine, grocery markets sell fruits and vegetables. So we just need to know what pharmacies sell. And since we know pharmacies sell medication, that will be the answer to this analogy problem. We then have another analogy problem here. Salesperson is to client as physician is to what? So again, if we think about salesperson and client, well, salespersons work with clients. So physicians, who do they work with? They work with patients. So that's the analogy here. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of problems of inducing structure. You need to identify the patterns and relations to be able to solve these problems. 
Let's now take a look at another type of problem solving, arrangement. In problems of arrangement, the person must arrange different objects in a specific way that satisfies some criterion. Now, these objects can be arranged in many ways, but only one or a few arrangements form a solution. So, as an example, we have anagrams. In anagrams, you're given several objects, which are several letters, and you have to figure out how you can rearrange the letters to make a word. So, we have some pretty tricky ones, right? This first one, K-J-I-C-H-A. So, how can we rearrange these letters to form a word? And in this case, the first one is hijack. You have all the letters, H-I-J-A-C-K. And then we have another example of an anagram. Again, we're given letters that we have to rearrange in a specific order to get the solution. So we have Y, Y, A, A, N, W. And the solution to this anagram is anyway. You have Y, Y, A, A, N, W. Okay, so that's one example of a problem of arrangement. Another example is what is known as the string problem. To better understand how a string problem works, take a look at this diagram. You can see that there are two strings that hang from the ceiling. These two strings need to be tied together. However, they are too far apart so that if a person grabs one string, they cannot walk over and grab the other. On the table, there's a pair of pliers. So the question is, how can you do this? How can you use what's available to you to be able to tie the two strings together? Now, in this case, the solution is to take the pliers on the table and tie it to one of the strings so that you essentially have a pendulum. And if you see in this diagram, you can see that if the pliers is tied to the string, you can use it as a pendulum and swing it back and forth so that as you're holding one string, you can grab the pliers as it's swinging towards you in the air as a pendulum. So once you're able to grab the other string, then you're able to tie the two together. So this gives you an idea of another type of arrangement problem. In the next video, we'll discuss the third type of problem solving.